So, can I introduce Trevor Woodard from Parkinson's Art? Thank you. I'll just share my screen now. Hopefully, you can Thank see you. it. Can you see the screen, everybody? Yeah, yeah. perfect. Thank you. And can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. good. All right. So, uh, First of all, thank you for inviting me to, to speak this morning. I uh, very much appreciate that. So thank you. Sorry, I've just, mu I've just muted you. Sorry, Trevor. It's all right, no problem. It's technology. Yeah. <laughs> so over the next uh, 20 to 30 minutes, I just want to talk to you about um, Parkinson's art in terms of who we are, what we do, what we offer, and uh, some of the initiatives and events we've got running to kind of share with you. So just a brief introduction about myself. So I've been living with Parkinson's for nearly 10 years. I was diagnosed at 38. Um, my background is in IT and IT management and consultancy. So not, I've got an artistic background at all. Uh, my sort of artistic journey started about three years ago. I'm not sure if it's the progression of the disease or of the combination of the medication, but um, started painting and never looked back since. So, um, so my background is more kind of from a business consultancy side. I currently work for Parkinson's UK, so I've got a dual job. So in the daytime, I work for Parkinson's UK in the office in London. And I also founded Parkinson's Art and I run the Parkinson's Art group um, outside of uh, office hours. So in terms of our story and a sort of brief sort of background, um, Parkinson's Art was founded in 2020. It's a UK registered non-profit organisation, so it's a community interest company, what's known as a SIC. So it's not a charity, but it's a, it's a not-for-profit organisation. Uh, the, the, the aims of Parkinson's Art is to promote the benefits of the arts, which we'll come on to very shortly, and to provide, give the, the community a voice and allow the community to express themselves on a platform. So we provide a free global platform, which is the website, and we'll come on to some of the other platforms uh, very shortly. And the organisation is run by artists and writers all living with Parkinson's, so we're all a bunch of volunteers who, who run Parkinson's Art. In terms of the team, it's a very small, dedicated team, uh, all volunteers, like I said before. We all come from different backgrounds, so we've got Dr Mary, who's a, who's a vet. We've got uh, Jan Sargent, who was a university lecturer. Um, we've got a, a mixed bag of, of skills and experiences. Um, all united by obviously a common goal and a common passion, which is the arts. We geographically spread in terms of a small team. So we cover uh, Germany, Mexico, USA, and the, the four of us in the UK. So we've kind of got an international, um, small international team, which is great for things like language translations, et cetera, that are trying to reach the global international, for the international Parkinson's community. It's good to have that, uh, people that, in-country knowledge or in-country connections or in-country um, languages, for example. So it's a very small team. Uh, our mission really is to inspire and develop creativity across the Parkinson's community. So we really want to um, promote the benefits of art to those who have not, uh, not experienced any of the, of the arts, but also to give them a, a, this platform to give them a voice and trying to encourage people to take up the arts. And our vision is to um, enhance the lives of people with Parkinson's for creativity, fun and self-expression. And it's quite important we feel that the, the self-expression give people that, that opportunity who if they can't communicate or can't tell their story or their message and want to kind of um, reach out and gives a, um, we give them an opportunity hopefully. Just touch on the set brief of the seven wonders of art, is what we call the seven wonders of art. Um, I'll talk about the arts in a moment. But there are many benefits, which I'm sure, I'm sure you may have um, you may have realised already. But um, so one is the, the cognition and helping thinking. Two is about giving confidence to people, uh, especially when we have the we have the, the live poetry classes where we invite people to kind of tip up and read their poetry, for example. Um, it's a good way of social interaction. With folks, so joining the sort of clubs or the different different initiatives. The speech part is very important. So learning to kind of articulate your voice and the breathing when reading the poetry for example is a really good um, benefit um, as i'm sure you may be aware about 30 40 30 to 40 percent of people at some stage will with Parkinson's will will suffer or feel some form of depression so 
being art and creative does kind of lift the mood. It kind of it triggers the reward brain, the reward system in the brain. It helps with concentration and finally the fine motor skills and the, so that's the coordination dexterity when it's using the, the brush or the whatever tool or technique you're using. So I suppose to, to summarise, there are many benefits of art and being creative, but we try to we try to capture this sort of the key seven um, elements. When we talk about the arts, what we mean is so we've got the visual arts of painting, uh, photography, we've got people who do lots of drawing, sculpture, um, we've got to include digital art as well on the top right there, and also the written art. So we've got the creative literature section of the website and the poetry, and we have lots of um, monthly po uh, writing challenges and uh, the poetry swap shop, which we'll come to in a moment. But I suppose the, the point of this slide or just this frame is to show you that. Um, we don't just mean painting, we mean the arts in general, and we try to be as encompassing as, 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 as possible. I'll show you the website in a moment and the, the academy, but the key kind of platforms. But um, the website is at www.parkinsons.art. It's a free platform for anybody who's associated with Parkinson's. We want to be as inclusive as possible. So that means people with Parkinson's, family, friends, um, carers, for example. So it's not exclusive for people with Parkinson's, it's, it's the, the wider community. Um, because Parkinson's, we feel, affects beyond just the, the person, it's the, the, the networks as well. Um, so you can post and share on there. So everything's free, there's, there's no charge for the website. It's just an opportunity to showcase your work, uh, share with people, get some feedback, whether it be that's paintings or whether it be um, submitting a piece of poetry to the poetry swap shop. Um, there's an opportunity there to share and um, reach out to people and get some feedback potentially. We also have a, the website's got a small shop on there where we sell art and allow artists to kind of submit their piece of, they want to sell some artwork, we do prints generally. And the money is raised for Parkinson's research by the Parkinson's UK. So we, we don't take any commission because we, we are a non-profit organisation. We generally raise funds for Parkinson's research which goes to Parkinson's UK. We also have the Hughes Talking online magazine, and that really is, is there to try and understand people's stories behind the art, because seeing the art is one thing and it's quite uh, powerful, but understanding the, the people's challenges or the stories or how they've kind of, their journey into the art is really interesting as well. And we try to have some guest speakers on there. So we have an online magazine called the Hughes Talking. And then we've run a series of events and competitions throughout the year. Um, generally have a couple of poach competitions, painting competitions, uh, some exhibitions and um, some general at the end of the year quizzes for example so some general um, free events for people to kind of participate in. We've just finished our poach competition which will be the winner will be announced on the 17th of July and the next ex the next event on our calendar is the Vivid Dreams exhibition. So this is going to be in London in the Oxo Gallery for two weeks from the 18th to 29th um, it's been funded by the Arts Council England and will be there'll be an exact replica online. So we've got the layout of the Oxo Gallery online, the exact dimensions of that layout. We want to give people the opportunity to visit the, uh, if you can't make it to, to London, especially for the international community, to visit the exhibition uh, online, get as near as um, possible experience. There are going to be 60 visual artists and eight audio artists. So these are all artists with, with Parkinson's and um, we've got some select paintings where people, some audio artists have written a three to five minute audio, submissive audio piece, so to, to kind of um, enhance the experience of looking at that piece of art. Um, there are about 70 pieces on, on offer, so mainly paintings and there's about eight painted mannequins, which each mannequin tells a story, which I um, Below just a brief uh, picture there, which shows you kind of the, the virtual environment. But the idea is that it takes, it, it raises awareness and educates people who are not aware of Parkinson's disease. Um, and ultimately it's around raising funds. So at the end of the two week exhibition, we're going to auction off all of the artwork with the proceeds for, for research with the proceeds um, going via to Parkinson's UK. Uh, if you are able to make it to London, uh, to Oxford Gallery, it's open 11am to 6pm daily and it's free admission. So free to the physical or the virtual is, uh, is free of charge.
we've also recently launched the Arts Academy, which was born out of the fact, I think, um, I, I work for Paddington's UK, and there are some groups like yourselves who've got some, some an, an arts group. There are other areas um, where there's, there's no, people got no access to any art group as such, or any kind of um, interaction with different artists. And what we wanted to do was a couple of things. We wanted to um, encourage people to take up art, and there's quite a bit of a barrier in terms of people who didn't know where to start, what the kind of basics were. So we wanted to create some free online courses which were aimed at the beginners to try and encourage people to take up arts, whether it be painting, we've got poetry, we've got uh, novel writing. Um, so we try to offer, we're going to expand the courses as it develops, it's, it's still relatively new. Um, but the idea is that we want to encourage people, and that's why we made it free of charge, or the courses are free of charge. And the, the courses are, they are different in terms of the structure. So they are some, the Poetry Without Fear, for example, is, is an entry level poetry course, which is six weeks, which has a tutor. Um, and it's kind of led by some videos and it's self-paced, but, but, but there's a cohort of, of people running through that course so they can share their experience of feedback, get feedback from the tutor. The courses themselves are designed and developed by people with Parkinson's. So the lady called Jan Sargent runs the Poetry Without Fear course. So the six week course there, as they go through that and learn each week the different through the video uh, tutorials and some exercises and gets feedback from the, the tutor and at the end there's a little small graduation ceremony. The idea being that once you've completed the first course, the entry level course, you can then go on to do the intermediate and advanced poetry courses. And we want to offer that the same for, for painting. Um, we've got a lady um, who has released a few novels who's going to write the, do the, the crime writing and novel writing for us. In September, we're going to launch the new Create With Clay. So it's very much aimed at people with um, Parkinson's and, and developed and, and led by, by people with Parkinson's as well. And we hope that the self, so we hope that some of the, so the self-paced and semi-structured will give people that opportunity to kind of have some structure without being too over, overloaded, but giving them the freedom that we appreciate people with Parkinson's um, and just generally people in, in general are quite busy and want to need to work their courses and their learning kind of uh, structure through their own, their own hours and their own ways. Well. So we tried to offer this a semi-structured course. We are applying for the British Arts Council for a second round of funding to develop the academy. So we really want to uh, reach out to the community to ask to try and tap into the experience and skills of, of that we've got in our own public community to help lead and develop more courses. So we've got the, the uh, creating of clay. We want to advance, we want to do some more painting courses, um, maybe doing a landscape painting course, for example, just so that can, people can develop and those who have already, who have already have already started painting or started their sort of journey on the, the arts can then even advance and develop and the idea being that we'll also offer some a mentoring um, scheme as well so as you subscribe to the, to the academy if you wanted to you could buddy up with somebody else um, to kind of go through the course or just to generally get some feedback and maybe some some kind of um, help in, in prompt and developing your, your own sort of artistic uh, skills I suppose. So it's still it's new. We've just done our first graduation. It's, it was last two weeks ago, sorry, of the Arts Academy, which we had 25 people um, um, graduated, which for a first start we thought was quite good. And we had some great feedback. Um, as ever, it's still a, a, a learning curve, but it, for us really, we hope that the Academy uh, will go from on from strength to strength. It is open, because it's online, it is open uh, to the international community and it's offered in Spanish and German, because they're the two, um, the two main languages apart from the from English that we, we get at the website. Um, so we try to be as inclusive and accessible as possible um, through making it easy in terms of different working hours or different time zones, different languages. Um, but uh, I'll show you the academy very shortly in a minute anyway. We've also like everybody else, um, every man and his dog, we've got a Facebook page. So we have our main page, which is kind of the, the um, Parkinson's art business page and then we've got a couple of groups one is we've just launched last week which, the, which is poetry um, we have the poetry section on the website and that's for everybody to see this, this smaller group is it's a closed group with the poetry one where it's for those who were just I mean, come through the academy or want to kind of share and get more feedback before publishing their kind of works of art whereas the poetry swap shop is more you, you put it out there and it's open to the public 
the, the poetry Facebook group is, is a closed group, which is open to anybody, but at least it's not, it's a contained group. And there's a couple of facilitators and moderators there who are quite experienced in, 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 in poetry to kind of help and develop. Uh, the key answer is really for us really, is trying to be inclusive and trying to bring people in and, and to try and uh, experience different arts and, and then promote them onwards. So there's different various ways to participate. Um, you can post and share on the website, so it's free to everybody. We, we, we're not, Panthers Art is not about, um, it, sorry, Panthers Art is, is em, the emphasis is on trying to work with, with groups to get people to, to take up art and to promote the groups, local groups, for example. Um, so we want, we want to encourage people to post and share and um, or enrol in a course on the Through the Academy. There are plenty of competitions and events throughout the year and it'd be great to see more people as we, we want to run a second exhibition later in the year to um, to, to promote, raise awareness and to promote people's work. And also we're a small team, it's a growing organisation, we're always looking for volunteers, so anyone's got a passion for the arts, um, whether it be helping to be a, develop a course on the, the academy or whether it's just some time to kind of help um, with, on the back end administration, we're always looking for volunteers and, and helpers. So I'll just give you a quick view of the website first. You may or may not have seen the website. So I'll move this out of the way, sorry. There we go. So I'm not trying to get rid of this to be fair, but anyway. Uh, can, you still, can you see the screen still? Sorry, there's, there's some, some form of um, Zoom drop down box that has come out. I'm not sure what's happened there. Maybe if I just change this over here, sorry. You can see it fine. Okay. So here's the website, um, which has kind of got the, the about the next the next event, which is the, the uh, exhibition. We've got the um, just some stuff about the creative literature sections, the writing. We have a um, live poetry evenings, so it's the last Tuesdays of the of the month. We have our 3D gallery, which we. Um, Sorry, something's just happened on my end. We're back, sorry about that. Um, so this is where we have our three, 3D virtual gallery, which you may or may not have seen. Um, you can go in there and that's where we, we post all the, the artwork. Um, I won't go through all now, but this is where this is, our, this is the main uh, piece of software we use. So it's our virtual gallery, where we post people's um, artwork, and people go go look around and view the the artwork. Um, I, I forgot there was some noise on the background noise in there. Sorry about that. But anyway, so we've got the the gallery there. Um, we've also got the creating literature page which is useful to um, where we have the poetry and writing challenges. We've got a list of artist directory, so all the, all the artists there, we've got the creating literature section. So here's where we have the writing challenges. So, so let's write a, a sonnet or some prose writing of the poetry workshops, poetry swap shop, where people can go and upload their, submit a poem, or you can go and read through people's poetry and the page and page of poetry there with lots of comments and lively feedback from people. We've got the shop which I spoke about um, so people can uh, buy art or sell their own art and submit their art if they wanted to. And then we've got the, the, the book section, the events. There's the Isle Online magazine, The Huge Talking. Uh, we've got a poetry competition which is complete. Um, so this is kind of, I suppose, just the, the broad uh, overview of the website. We're on most of the social media channels, which you can see. From here, you can the signpost and go to the Academy. So this is an example of the, one of the courses where it's a six-week course, the um, section down the left-hand side, and they're made up of like sort of five to ten-minute videos, um, some learning out objectives and what you'll learn, some key poems to read. 
And at the end, at the bottom there, you can submit your, your, your homework, so to speak, and get feedback from the course tutor. So um, the intention is that we'll develop these academies where you can kind of enroll on a, um, on a particular course and have these semi-structured semi -structured, uh, classes, whether it be uh, video or text or homework. It's a kind of combination, I suppose. So they're kind of the three key areas. Um, so we've got the, the website which all the, and all of the exhibition stuff and the general stuff in there. We've got the Facebook pages and groups and we've got the, the academy. But you can navigate to all of those through the, um, through the website. It's everything signposted through here. We've got the, the, the links to social media over here. Um, so that there were kind of some of the systems, I suppose. Uh, is there any questions or anybody, any, any? Tim, um, sorry, Trevor, Tim, I noticed you'd got your hand up. Did you want to ask a question? You're muted, Keith. Sorry, I was saying, Tim, I noticed you'd got your hand up, Tim Glover. Nope. You're muted, Tim. No, I haven't got any questions. Thank you. Okay, no problem. Um, I have. <laughs> I've got one as well. I think David and I are on the same page. Um, wondering, I mean, there's no performing art in, in um, under the umbrella of arts. Is there a parallel performing arts Parkinson's group? Um. Not that we're of at the moment. Um, I think because we only started relatively last year in 2020, we initially started with the visual arts of just painting and it's slowly it's, it's, it's spread out um, from then. In terms of performing arts, we don't have anything at the moment. We don't have anything at the moment. I'm not sure if there's any, any other groups. Um, but I'm sure they do, yes. Actually, yeah, I'm sure they are, but uh, not, that, not that we're linked to or we're aware of at the minute working with. David, you wanted to ask a question. Well, mine was specifically about music, which you didn't seem to have anything on. I wondered if that was a possibility to add. Yeah, so we do have a music section. I didn't really quit. Um, let me show you somewhere. We've got the sounds uh, section here. So we've been working with, this is relatively new, and we've been working with uh, a couple of people like Dave Sankster, Darren Trill, who have created their own music, and we're trying to promote the music. Um, but it's just been a bit more of a slower burn, to be fair. Okay. So we, what we're trying to do is two things. One is to try and match people together. If, if people want to kind of work as looking for um, and other musicians or trying to do some form of collaboration, we try and um, put them together. And secondly, then if they want to create their, their musical um, or their, their piece of audio, uh, we, we promote it and, and post it on here. So we, we've got a very, uh, very sort of slim section on the on the on the on music at the moment. Okay. It's like like most things, we 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 try to um, be as wide offering as we can, but also we've only got a limited team, and also um, you know when you start getting lots of different covering lots of the different sort of types of art, um, there's a doubt, there's a danger that we kind of lose focus on one, and what we're trying to do is do is trying to get the the real core bit working first and then trying to add on that when we get the the need from people and the request from people um it's very much a community-led initiative so if there so for example the music there was a couple of people who asked a similar question so we've created the a section there and um which is great but we, we need to kind of people to help us drive the, like this this section forward to the same with photography to help like run competitions to generate interest to kind of drive the the section going i suppose when, when, when did you realise you've got an artistic talent then, Trevor? I went to New York and uh, saw the street art of the, what was known as the Bushwick Collective. And before doing art, I, I tinkered into doing woodwork and had a little wo uh, workshop doing woodwork. And um, when I came back from there, I thought, I'll just have a little go. I was inspired by seeing the, the great art, the street artwork. And um, yeah, so came back, had a go. And like most things, you kind of, 
then start to look on YouTube to kind of try and learn how to do certain techniques or certain styles and and experiment in some respect. And um, yeah, I've never looked back since. Um, unfortunately, but the last 18 months, my tremors have got started to get more um, pronounced. So my painting habits kind of are early in the morning when it's when it's, when it's not too bad or um, or start to take more of a broader push and do more abstract work, to be fair. So, um, yeah. It, it's, it's interesting. Alan, Alan Brown was telling us when he spoke to us that he gets up at three o'clock in the morning because he doesn't tremor at three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. He's painting. <laughs> That's remarkable. Yeah. I mean, at first, I used to, um, when I started painting, when I was focused on doing the actual painting, my, my tremors and some of the symptoms seemed to have dis you know, reduced slightly and I just kind of almost forgot about them. But uh, I think the last 18 months in particular, my voice has, sort of, has really kind of deteriorated and my tremors have got that bad where the, the, the window of opportunity for me to paint is kind of really early hours in the morning, similar to, to, to what you meant, the guy mentioned there. But uh, yeah. So later in the day when I get more, more tired perhaps and uh, I sort of give up to be fair because you get so far into a painting and then make a huge mistake or something it could find quite frustrating but. Do you, have you got any of your paintings you can show us some of your work? Uh, yes certainly I can show you now yeah. So my work's kind of quite, um, first of all, it's vibrant and colourful. It's, it's not fine art. It's a bit of a mixture of, um, I like to work with bright colours and bold colours and one stuff that's kind of quite, um, um, it's not fine art, clearly. Dramatic. Dramatic might be, yeah. So my, my, my children aren't big fans of my art, to be fair, and, and a lot of people probably aren't. But um, yeah, it's, it's pretty... That's because the influence was more from street art perspective. I enjoyed the, the graffiti art and um, more the kind of um, pop art sort of is my sort of general taste, but uh, it's, it's certainly not for everybody. And I've also started doing more digital art, so I've done quite a few of these which I create digitally and draw on a drawing, a graphics drawing pad and, and um, work them that way. So um, that's what Hockley's doing at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. What, more digital art? Yeah, David Hockney is doing that at the moment, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. I find that with the digital art, for me, if I've got a, a sort of uh, if half an hour which I'm feeling quite well, I can sit down and, and practice. And if I make a mistake, the beauty of it for me, at least, I do control Z and it undoes the, the mistake. Whereas in, in reality, and when I'm painting, um, I probably get more satisfaction when I finish a, a complete real painting. Um, but I just have to kind of have one hand, my tremor hand against the garage wall when I'm painting to help steady my other hand. And um, yeah, just, I suppose I have to be realistic with my expectations as well. Sometimes I get a bit frustrated of the kind of wavering lines or something that just at the end make a mistake and it was, I was getting a bit frustrated. Whereas I kind of moved, gravitated to digital art because it allows me to um, express myself. But if I make a mistake, it's easy to rectify, I suppose. So I think he was on mute, Keith, sorry. You've got an interesting picture of a, of a, of a sort of skull with flowers, very which Damien is uh, very Damien Hirst, because he's just brought out a new collection, which is all flowers now. Yeah, this is one which um, I did with painting, actually, in the, about 18 months ago. Um, I just like, I'm not sure what, what it was, I was just drawing, perhaps it's the simplicity of, I was trying to, when I first started to learn about art, I was focused on trying to draw a face um, as a kind of basic beginner. And that's what I suppose the emphasis on the school section is that it allows me to play with the different colors and textures, um, but not actually have the detail of the, of, the, of the kind of true portraiture, if you like, face. So it's more that, so I don't know, I, once you get into kind of a groove or you like doing a certain type, you, I suppose you go back to that, don't you, in some respects. Um, yeah, sure. Anyway. You've probably noticed, Trevor, I'm, I'm recording this. Um, I, I trust you have no problems with us putting this on, a, on the branch YouTube channel because I think it's a fascinating insight to what you do. And I'm certain there's got to be lots of people out there that are wondering how to 
channel talents or to develop their talents yeah indeed so uh, please feel free we, we um we, we're trying to reach out to the, all areas of the community whether it's the, the uk or international and um you know one of the challenges we, we we find is trying to reach out to people who have not got associated associated to a club or not necessarily online I mean, oh, clearly we're very much focused on on the online and we're going to run on the 24th of july at the worcester warriors rugby stadium we're running a we are joining the Parkinson's and sport Parkinson's event and we're going to run the creative zone there so it's an opportunity to, kind of, to try and reach people in in person um because uh, like most people the last 18 months in particular we've everyone's been kind of doing zoom sessions which is great so for well there's a pros and cons isn't there for zoom but um but it means that we don't reach necessarily the people who are not online or not associated with the club and that's the one the channel wants to try and reach so uh, it's by word of mouth is, is really great as well I, th I think that's the big challenge for us all is how do we reach out and communicate with the the non-connected it's, it's a big challenge yeah, indeed and you know what i've noticed also is that there's a there's a growing trend and rightly so about people focusing on, on the physical side of, of um physical exercise uh, i work for Parkinson's uk and we, there's a big emphasis on the, on the physical exercise which you know research to show it does stop the progression or slow the progression down um but it's more people who are not sports orientated or not, not so mobile um we want to try and reach um but at the same time it's trying to reach those people as well so um yeah but if by uh by spreading the word you're really helping us out so um and, and likewise we want to really help the clubs the local groups out as well in terms of trying to if people come to to Parkinson's art, um, if there's a local club, we'll 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 obviously push them, signpost them to the local to local groups as well, uh, and you know we want to kind of showcase the group's works as well where we can. I think that, that there's a great basis there for some cooperative work because I can see, you know, getting back face to face and doing meetings. Um, our views are that our meetings will in future be hybrid, so we could have meetings where we've got either somebody showing us art um running a class for us live or remotely so yeah, indeed i think there's some real opportunities to be a, a bit creative here yeah Sorry about the pun <laughs> that's all right we do see it, there's a bit of a, a change where we've gone from in person to all online i think but now the, the new world will be the hybrid where yeah. i think a lot of organizations like working from home and they're kind of mixed where they're going off a couple of days and that, that hybrid approach i think might be the new way of working if i dare use that phrase and a lot of the clubs and a lot of sport a lot of the activities will probably go that way because you've got the global reach and access to courses but at the same time if you've got that connection the local connection and can see people in yeah. in real it's always good to to meet people and have that local activity still still as well so yeah yeah because one of our recent meetings we've got um a speaker in London, somebody in Shetland, somebody else in Bristol, somebody in Ipswich. It was, yeah, remarkable. And um, I listened to the um, Beating Parkinson's um, presentation with people in America and Holland speaking to the Brits. It was, yeah, remarkable. The world is suddenly a very small place. That's right, yeah. And we, we find that um, we have about 350 artists and writers who have participated on the, on the website. Do you? Yeah, and um, out of that, probably 45% are outside the UK. So uh, that was my next question. How many of you are involved? So 350 of them. Yeah, it's, some, some, some submit quite a lot of art. Others just kind of show, want to show the one one off piece of art and not really uh, put a profile on there. So, so we get a bit of a mixture of people. Some people just want to want to write, submit a piece of poetry. Um, some of us who were kind of really regularly active on the site doing the writing challenges, for example. Um, but we have the, the exhibition, for example, is from 70 artists, 60 artists from 12 countries. So it goes to show, you know, just by putting the exhibition on in, in, in the UK, we've got um, representation from 12 different countries. That's which remarkable. Is, which is great. And the website yeah. itself gets about 5,000 visitors a month. Hmm. Um, so it's, it's, it's a growing, um, in terms of its popularity, because some people like to submit art, others just like to look and read and, and, uh, and um, yeah, read the poetry. You'd have, you'd have seen some of the comments come up on the chat, um, really complimenting you on sort of amazing growth in less than 12 months. It's, um, you must all be very pleased with the way it's gone. 
We are, but I think it's just a recognition that, that there was a gap, and I think, mm. for, in some respects, and I think, it, I mean, I work in Parties UK, and I try to, to bang the drum internally about making sure that the arts get their fair share of um, support, their, their kind of focus, um, because there is a tendency to kind of to, to drift off. There was a, for example, a writing club, I believe, or writing pack, trying to get people to do creative writing, mm. which was dropped, I believe, in 2017 from Parkinson's. So we try to pick that up and say, actually, there's quite a lot of people who are interested in poetry, creative writing, right, you know, uh, literature. And, um, and, and by doing, if I set up the website, we can see now there's evidence because there's lots of people who, who have come and, and uh, reached out and said, you know, want to contribute or learn a bit more. So hopefully they'll, the, the, the bigger charity will give a bit of uh, some focus to, to, to the arts as well, I suppose. Well, I think there's a challenge to some of our members, really. <laughs> Artistic talents. Anybody got any artistic talents they want to share? It's, it's all gone very quiet, Trevor. No problem. But um, the, the email address, if, if anyone wants to, uh, any questions or anyone wants to submit any art, um, the, the email, I can share the email address with you after this um, yep. on the call. And uh, we'd be glad to and more than happy to welcome anyone's um, art, artwork or contribution to show it. Um, there's no membership as such. We just, uh, we try to keep it fairly free and informal and relaxed and um, participate and show what as much as you want or as, or, as, or as little as you want, but we're trying to encourage people to at least have a go and um, and share the work. That's brilliant. Uh, Trevor, if I wanted to show some photographs, what would, what should I do? Uh, th there's an email address which I'll I'll share, well, I'll, I'll give it to Keith perhaps to share out. It's on the website, but I'll, but I'll send it to you anyway. You simply can just... Um, Submit the you email across the the artwork or the photographs that you want to post with your name and a brief bio, um, and it's fairly straightforward. Then, then we'll, we'll we'll put it online. Okay, thanks. I'll get that, David, and and share share across the group. I'll do that when I do the edit over the weekend. Right, fine. Has anybody else any other questions they would like to ask Trevor whilst we've got? Can I ask a question about, um, is there any discussion group with art history? There isn't, but we did have a gentleman who reached out to us who doing more, not art, sort of art history, but also he wanted to start a little club about um, doing art research about the provenance of certain piece of art. That's and I think his role was more about um, trying to work out the validity of some art and his techniques about how he goes about that. Um, so we've invited him to to write a, an article, an article in the um, online magazine, the huge talking, because I think there's some interest there. But um, we've, we've not received it yet. But hopefully we have that. To promote, but yeah. Would you be interested in picking that up, Barry? Sorry. Would you be interested in picking that up? Well, I just have a, I have a couple of pictures. One of which is. Um, a painting that was painted uh, around about 1911 um, and there's little bits of history about that that I'd like to resolve with anybody that's uh, an ancestry person or somebody like that with interest in art. Um, I've got another picture which I bought as a, a job lot which is clearly continental but um, I was interested in the comment that you've got Spanish and German um, people in, uh, interested in the, in the, in the um, website. Yeah. It might well be that um, the one picture that I'm talking about is uh, has a German or Dutch or Flemish um, uh, origin. I, I'm just intrigued by that because all it all is, it's a small watercolor and it's only got uh, um, uh, three letters on it and the date of 1866 or something like that. Okay. Well, we could certainly share with you the the contact of the gentleman who who specialised in doing the the art research. Um, he might be able to give some advice and help. We're hoping that he's going to give some. Uh, this article might at least articulate about how he goes about trying to find the the, the provenance or the research behind the particular his method he uses. Sorry, so we can just kind of share that as well because yeah. there's one or two people who've, who've asked a sort of similar question. But um, if not, I'll certainly give you his contact details as well because he's, he's quite a prolific and um, enthusiastic art researcher. That's brilliant. I'm interested you. in your um, your Indonesian pictures. Is that batik or is that a painting? Uh, no, it's Batik. It is Batik. Yeah, from Surabaya. Yeah. I've got a 
collection of uh, um, uh, batiks from Penang that I got in 1972. Oh, right. Oh, wow. Um, they're, uh, they're framed on the, in the hall. I, I've maybe put that online. It's uh, sort of historically quite interesting because uh, it's from a gallery that I'm sure no longer exists in Leith Street in uh, Penang. Oh, wow. Interesting. Is there a discussion group on, on the website or do you do you use Facebook for that? Um, so we've got a couple of really. We've got the, the poetry group on Facebook is more the discussion for poetry. And we have the, um, under the creating literature, there's a kind of comments section at the bottom where people are kind of running threads uh, for, right. that, for that sense. And same with the paintings. Um, but so it's kind of, it's, there's no quick answer. It's split across different areas. We did have a, we did offer a forum section where people could ask questions about their artwork, um, but it just wasn't popular. So we had probably about half a dozen people post a few questions. And unless you get that momentum, people kind of contributing to it and asking stuff, yeah. it didn't take off. So we've, we've, we've parked that for now, but we thought that'd be a great idea where people, for example, like self Barry could ask a question there and someone might pick it up and say, oh, I know about research this or, you know, um, so we, we're trying to be just well, trying to work at what's, neat, what's popular, I suppose. I congratulate you on your site. It's an amazing achievement in the period of time it's been working. Yeah, thank you. But to be fair, the, 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 the thanks should go to all the artists, people who contribute. What we're doing really is providing the platform. It's the it's the community who created such such artwork, and there's some some phenomenal talent. I would love to show the the Vivid Dreams um, exhibition now, but it's under close wraps until the until it like. But some some really amazing professional, some of some clearly professional artists. But also from generally across the community, across the world, it's, uh, it's it's phenomenal art, really, what we've collected. So uh, the exhibition will be great. Which um, you know, please, hopefully by the, on the eighteenth of August, you can you can look at it and view it online. And um, we'll we'll certainly advertise that on our website, and we'll make sure that it's publicised sort of on our newsletters that go out. Okay, thank you. To the members should be delighted to. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. I missed oh. that. What was, what was that about adding to the newsletters? No, I was just saying we, we need to we we need to publicise the the Vivid Arts exhibition. Um, we probably won't get it in the next newsletter, but I'll make sure it's in the next batch of emails with some publicity. Just one question about the online magazine: Can that do you to subscribe to that and it gets sent to you, or do you have to go online to the website and look at it? You have to go on the on, on the online and look at it. Um, we we've we've got a newsletter which you, you can subscribe to. And we're thinking about creating the a section on there for the article, which can go which be attached to that in a PDF. Um, we've just not got around to that yet. So at the moment, you need to just go onto the. We generally, when there's a new article, we put it on the front page for a couple of weeks to sort of say and if, for the week to sort of say there's a new article and people can click through and read. Um, we are look, looking at the. The newsletter and can we incorporate the the article with that um we're just trying to get the analytics to understand how many people actually read the the, the newsletter first and how popular it is so we, as a because of quite new we're just trying to tweak things and work out what works for people and what doesn't work um oh. trevor um thank you um amazing remarkable um uh, thank you thank you for inviting me today it's been uh, it's a real yeah, pleasure cool. so. i think it's just i think it's been super wasn't expecting anything quite like what you had been talking about i wasn't sure what to expect but it's been really really valuable and i'm certain that there's an awful lot more budding artists out there that can be inspired by what you're doing as a group so, yeah I hope so, yeah okay well thank sure. you very much and uh, i'll send you my e the email contact for keith to if share that would be that would be great Trevor. can i just thank ask you. people not necessarily to unmute thank but to thank you a round of applause much appreciated. Thank you. Trevor, can you unshare your screen now? Yes. For us, please. Thank you. Right. Okay, thanks, everybody. Thanks, thanks. Trevor. Thank you Cheers. so much. Bye. Cheers now. Bye.